What do you do when the server crashes or data is corrupted or something goes wrong with technology and your website goes down? This video outlines not how to prevent a disaster, but how to deal with it. Because when there's a problem, an emergency, if you make a mistake, it can quickly become a hundred times worse. This video is for system admins, chief technology officers, or even just software engineers that are somehow involved. There are nine steps that I've used in the past to make disasters less disastrous, less of an emergency, or if it is a true emergency, to at least make it as minimal as possible and to get back online as quickly as possible. But first, let's discuss what is a disaster. Anything that takes your company offline so that your employees cannot be productive, that's a disaster. Anything that prevents your customers or clients from being able to access the website or the app, also a disaster. Of course, anything that corrupts data, big disaster. Anything that is a security breach where sensitive data is gotten out, that's a horrible disaster. The first thing to realize is there are multiple possible causes for any perceived disaster. The nine steps I outline next work regardless of what type of disaster it is and regardless of the cause of the disaster. For example, if your company website goes offline, that can happen for so many different reasons. It could be something totally trivial or a true horrible disaster. Let's say you're working remotely and your director of operations calls you from Ohio to say that the website is down and nobody in Ohio can work. They can't access the website at all. What are you going to do? The, the director is starting to panic. Before I outline the steps to take, let's go over a possible causes for this problem from the trivial to the more disastrous. Number one, really only the Ohio office has the problem. It could be a router or an internet access issue. The rest of the world accesses the website fine. Number two, network node in Ohio was cut and traffic using the network lost access. The DNS needs to reroute, contact your data center and let them know the details. This has happened to me in the past where there was nothing wrong with the rest of the country, but some farmer ran over a fiber optics cable. Number three, a renegade admin changed everyone's password without notifying management. Hopefully that never happens in your company, it's never happened in mine. The data center, number four, the data center performed scheduled maintenance and their backup battery failed or something went wrong with the data center backup. Number five, some developer uploaded a core file or database configuration file and brought down the website. That's actually the easiest to fix in most cases. Number six, server software failure. Apache kernel crash, SQL server crash, etc. This almost never happens, but that doesn't mean it never happens. Number seven, DDoS attack on your server. That could bring it down. Number eight, hackers infiltrated your server and encrypted the hard drive for ransomware. Uh, number nine, hard drive is full. I can't believe that still happens, but it does. Number 10, hardware failure at the data center. Could be firewall, router, network card, one of the servers, etc. Number 11, hard drive failure and corruption. Number 12, database corruption. And of course, there's many other possible problems. Feel free to add in the comments disaster scenarios that you've had to deal with, especially the more trivial and funny ones. Uh, one of my favorites was when somebody in upper level management called me because they were working from home and they told me, bad news, the server's down. And it turned out their internet was down. They had no access to any websites. So uh, you never know how bad it is until you actually look into it. When the director of operations or anybody else in your company calls and says that there is a major problem, they have no idea if it is a trivial issue or a true disaster. It's your job to keep a level head and to keep everybody calm and deal with it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Now for the nine steps 
to handle any disaster. First, remember, at all points, communication is key. It is so important to communicate frequently and briefly so that you can get the project done and people don't panic more than they need to. And with that, step one is notify top management. Uh, tell them what you tell them that you're doing these nine steps, make it short and brief. Say there seems to be a problem. We are not sure what it is. We are looking into it immediately. All of our top people are on this. We will let you know as soon as we have any answers. Send it off to the top management. You should have a group email list that you can send it off to. Um, and you might even want to pre-write the, the email. Um, there should also be a sentence, don't bother me while I work on this emergency. Unless you have value, valuable information, do not bother me. I've had to tell upper level management a couple of times, you are slowing me down from resolving this issue. Stop talking. Another reason that you want to send off the, the information immediately, and if there is a problem, a lot of people will be like, I do not want to communicate until I know what it is. You need to communicate immediately because um, you don't know if somebody's about to give a big sales presentation or they're about to uh, give training. And this gives them an opportunity to postpone the training or postpone the sales presentation, take everybody out to lunch or whatever while you deal with the, the emergency. Number two, Notify all techs that it's all hands on deck, that you need help, and um, set up a conference call. The reason you want to do this is also because it could be one of your techs that caused the problem. If they uploaded a new core file and it broke the website, or they uploaded something and it corrupted the um, SQL configuration file, that could take the whole website down, in which case you just have to revert to the prior version. So definitely notify all of your technical staff immediately. Number three, and still make that email short and brief. Um, usually copy and paste your previous email to top management so it has the basics of what the problem is and lets them know that you're working on it immediately. Number three, put up a message saying the website's down. When you're in panic mode, when there's a disaster, the uh, knee-jerk reaction is let's fix the problem. That's not the right thing to do. The thing to do is stop the bleeding. Stop having people go to the website and find a problem and then freak out or think that your website is uh, unreliable. Put up a, a notice saying we are down for scheduled maintenance. Uh, sorry for any inconvenience. Please come back in a couple of hours. Um, put that up and at least that way you won't have any further bad face. And anybody that was going to come and see that your site's down will now have a nice message so that they won't think that there's a, a, a worse problem than there actually is. Number four. Take a deep breath. Calm down. Notifications have been sent out. The bleeding has stopped. Try not to panic. That could make it worse. If you panic and you do something uh, really quick without thinking it 100% through, you can make things 100 times worse. Uh, you'll have some of your developers and upper level technical staff say, oh, I can fix this and this and this. And you say, wait a second, don't do anything rash. If they do something rash that involves the database, it could trickle down to your replicated databases. It could break the only thing that will allow you to fix it properly. So the first thing you want to do is stop the bleeding, which is take the site down so that people aren't still hammering the site which could break things further, either break the data further or whatever, corrupt the data. And don't let your techs fix things too quickly without reviewing the plan to make sure that 
their fix. For example, you know, hey, I'm going to reboot the server. Well, don't reboot the server yet. Um, that might clear the cache. You might need the cache. So get on a group call with all the techs and say, okay, before we start doing anything rash, let's evaluate and share notes to see if anybody has any insights. Has anybody made a change last night? Number five, find out what the actual problem is. This should be done while you're on a group conference call with all your technical staff. Uh, do some fast brain, brainstorming and then send out a quick brief message to top management. We discover what the problem is. We haven't fixed it yet. We're all working on it. We have three ideas. We'll get back to you. Short, sweet, then get back to solving the emergency. Uh, number six, prioritize the tasks that need to be fixed and get back online ASAP. So at that point, you now should know what the problem is. You prioritize how to resolve the problem and figure out, okay, can we just do these two things and get back online? Or do we need to recover data before we allow people to get back online? Um, so you got to prioritize the things first, because if you jump too quick and you turn it back on, but the data has been corrupted, then you'll have everybody making the data worse when you really need to spend that extra time to fix the data before you put it back online. With number six, you prioritized, you prioritize the tasks. Now with number seven, you actually find the bugs and you fix it, or you find the problems and you fix them. Then you send out another brief message to top management saying, okay, we fixed these problems. We estimate we'll be back online at this time. Please don't interrupt. We'll get back to you as soon as we have more information. Number eight, find the cause and make a method to prevent it from ever happening again. If you have not found the cause within three hours, then send a uh, update to top management because the site, after you've found the problem and fixed it on number seven, you sent them a quick update. So now it's been three hours, you haven't found the cause yet. Now say, okay, write up the full, the full uh, information about what the problem was, how it was fixed, and send it off to them. Um, and then tell them, as soon as we find the cause, we will finish our methodology to prevent it from ever happening again, and then we'll send you another email. And then you do just that. You continue working on finding the cause. Now this could take days, but at least now you've gotten the website back up. You stopped the bleeding, you stopped the panic, you got the website back up. And now you work on finding the cause to make sure this never happens again. Number nine, communication. After you found the cause, number nine is you communicate one last time with upper management and you explain the how, when, why, where, and what. What is being done to prevent this from ever happening again? How you discovered it, how it happened. Um, so you write that all up and if you do so, then you've turned this disaster situation into a valuable learning experience, which you'll make sure will never happen again for the company and they'll have to look at you as the the person who's the hero who solved the problem and will make sure that the company runs much smoother in the future because of it i recommend you take these nine items you write them into a template right now put them in a draft folder for your email and be ready if you ever have an emergency so you can just fill them out the top level management really like to see that you have a full nine step plan, which includes discovering the cause of the problem and preventing it from ever happening again. Now that counts for whether it's a hardware problem and a disk crashed, and then you say, well, next time we're using RAID, or if it's uh, something more crazy like, okay, well, we had a farmer run over a fiber optic cable. 
and now we have all the contact information on speed dial for the data center so we can alert them plus we found out the proper uh, commands to use to find out where the connection failure is i have a tech who's really good at that it's uh, we actually had to do that i think three times in the last 15 years and he was able to discover the break and recommend to the data center how to fix their routing faster than the data center was. So there's ways that you can fix any problem and uh, become a hero when there's a disaster and, uh, instead of getting an ulcer. Good luck. Now to end this video about disaster recovery, the Programming Labs joke of the day. A project manager and a young programmer board a train going to Wichita through the mountains. They can't find any seats except for two seats that are sitting directly across from a young lady and her grandmother. They sit down and within the first half hour, the young programmer and the young lady are having a great time laughing and flirting. Everything's going smoothly. And then the train goes through a tunnel and it's pitch black. Everybody hears the sound of a kiss and then a hard slap. It's silent. 30 seconds later, they come out from the tunnel. Everybody's sitting there looking a little bit nervous and quiet. The grandmother is glaring at the young programmer and she's thinking to herself, I cannot believe how brash he was to kiss my granddaughter. I am so glad she slapped him. The project manager has pulled out a notepad and he's trying not to look at anybody and he's thinking, I never thought the young programmer had it in him to do something so audacious. I just wish the young girl hadn't missed him when she slapped me. And the young lady, she was demurely looking down at her hands and she was thinking, it was very nice that the young programmer kissed me. I just wish my grandmother hadn't slapped him so hard. Meanwhile, the young programmer sat there with a small smile on his face and he was thinking, life is good. How often do you get to kiss a beautiful girl and slap your project manager on the same day? Have a great day. Subscribe for more on the business of programming.